Hey, welcome back. This is Felice from Why You Need Life. I'm here for part two on the career series talking about the field of radiology. So congratulations. You're one of two people. You passed your board exam and you landed your first job or you're looking for your first job or two, you're interested in becoming a rad tech or you're currently in some classes. So I just kind of wanted to touch bases with you all uh, to see how you're doing and to kind of give you some of my experiences that I had in the field. Um, again, radiology is a promising field and I think it's a great field to go into. So really the purpose of this video is to sort of give you a quick walk through the life of a rad tech or radiology tech. Don't say technician, they are not technicians, we are technologists. Technicians typically um, um, work on like the equipment and things of that nature but we are technologists where we actually go out into the field and we do uh, we have direct patient care so uh, just in the field of radiology as an introduction I started as a student back in September of 2007 here in the wonderful state of Michigan um, so after about six months they hired um, myself and the other student as uh, casual or per, per diem or as needed and at that time we were making eighteen ninety six an hour. Uh, today is probably a lot more than that, but again, this was back in two thousand and seven, which was actually a nice amount to make because that was most the most money I had ever made in my entire life, you know. So I was like, what eighteen dollars? Okay, all right, I like it. So as a casual, you're not guaranteed any hours per pay. Um, so again, we will work as needed, but we were needed all the time. So the good thing about the field of radiology is that it's a 24-hour modality. And so that means that you'll have hours in positions that are available and more jobs because you need techs around the clock to where if you work specifically in uh, the hospital, but if you work in like a clinical or if you work like a, as a, a medical assistant or, assistant or anything, those are just nine to five and they may only need two. Whereas in radiology, I think the last time uh, I checked, there were maybe almost 20 techs. So that's 20 jobs. And do keep in mind that when I worked there back in 2007, a lot of them are aging and so a lot of people are retiring so I believe there's going to be a boom of, of jobs um, in the in the field of radiology so um, just to kind of talk about pay I know a lot of people don't talk about it but I'm just being 100% honest with you so in the southernmost um, areas I can only speak for Michigan um, we did average a lot more than the, uh, the northern parts so again, the starting pay for a full-time or part-time person, again, the wage of eighteen ninety six was for a casual. But if you were a full-time or part-time um, employee, you started around $23 to $24 an hour, which is still nice, you know, because, you know, um, a lot of jobs don't pay that. So you start off around $23 to $24 an hour. You typically reach the top of the scale and you tap out at about $30 an hour, a little bit over $30 an hour. Um, so per year, the ranges would be from about $47,000, a little over $47,000 to maybe about $62,000. And this does not include um, the premium for like off shifts and for working weekends. I know for a week, if you were like a weekend cadre, a person that worked like every Friday, Saturday or Sunday, you got an additional 15% um, plus whatever shift premium that you made. So, I mean, you can really, really um, do well if you know, you get like a weekend job or something like that. So I did work at a doctor's office just to kind of give you some comparables to pay. Um, in 2009, I worked there for a small amount of time. And there I, I made $17 per hour. So again, some pay um, more than others, uh, depending on your specific area. But like in Michigan, I think you'll, it might be $20 or more um, as a casual. But then like when you're hired on, uh, we were uh, a union hospital, and typically union hospitals have uh, higher pay wages. But um, again, that doesn't promise that you will make more than uh, non-union places. Um, so they are just averages. Again, some sites may pay more, others may pay less, but that's kind of a general idea of what you can expect to be paid. So the typical work hours are from uh, usually eight hours, some are 10 hours, and some are 12 hour shifts. So they kind of vary. We had like a variance of some were eight, some were um, 12, some were 10 hours. So it kind of depends on the need of the department and how they schedule them. Um, so I worked at, as an x-ray tech for about two and a half years before I transferred into uh, CAT scan or computed tomography. So let's talk about day one, okay? 
you're going to be very, very nervous. That's a given, okay? That's not anything that's new or something you would not expect. So um, you're on your own now. You don't have that preceptor to say, uh oh, that's not right, or I would do it this way, or are you sure? Things of that nature. You don't have that person there anymore. So you're there on your own and you're operating under your own license and there's just a lot running through your head. So th that's normal, okay? You'll be fine, trust me, you'll be fine. If I can make it, anybody can make it. So I would recommend having a pocket-sized positioning book such as this one. Um, you will be, um, even if you're pretty familiar with positions and things, there will always be that one doctor, the one doctor that will order a mandible or sinus x-rays. And I say that it's always that one doctor because they're usually older. Um, and those are not exams that are very popular. So sometimes you have to refer back to, okay, what angle do I need to angle the tube on? Or how do I position a patient? Or what if the patient can't get in this position? What are my alternatives? And things of that nature. Also, keep your notes. As I talked about in uh, part one, if you haven't looked at that exam, or excuse me, at that video, I encourage you to look at that as well. But have those notes that I encouraged you to write down, even the simplest um, of details, write it down just in case you've forgotten something. You want to have all that you need to succeed um, because a lot of these places, you make a mistake, they will fire you or they have like a system, a demerit system or something like that. So you want to make sure that you uh, leave a very good impression. So the facility that I worked at, um, we did, we, that I currently work at, we have uh, fluoroscopy exams. Um, so you'll do things like swallowing evaluations, upper GIs, small bowel studies, hip injections, uh, the dreaded barium image. Uh, you probably learned about it um, in class when you have to stick it in the patient's rectum. Honestly, it's not the most pleasant thing to do. I just try to keep in my head, okay, I'm helping this person to feel better. I'm helping this person to feel better. But there are some horror stories with these, but we did a lot of those. So just be prepared for that. Um, as you know, you'll wear the lead that will protect you, your thyroid and your gonads and all that. So you'll probably do a lot of fluoroscopy. So you'll do like the x-ray part of things and you'll do fluoroscopy. Another part is working up in the operating room or better known as the OR. So the OR environment can be very intimidating. Doctors will look at you like you have the cooties. You're like, okay, what's wrong? What did I do? Like, why are they all gawking at me? What can I say? Did I say something? I don't know. So everyone in the room will most likely stare at you. It's going to happen. You're a new face. You're in a sterile procedure. Um, they take, you know, sterile environments very, very seriously because obviously you don't want the patient to have, um, walk away with any type of infection or anything like that. First off, because they care. And secondarily, that does look bad in the hospital. But you had to prove yourself to these people. You're like, why do I need to prove yourself? I have my license. I'm here for a reason because I've proved so anyways, that's just with any, typically with any OR, you're going to have that, the staff up there that's going to look at you like, what are you doing? Who are you? Blah, blah, blah. That's expected. Um, so you need to know the C-arm, the C-arm. You have to make sure you have the right OR um, attire. So typically when you work in this field, like at my um, uh, specific hospital, we can wear whatever colors we want to wear. However, when we go up to the OR, they have a typical OR scrub that you get while you um, go to work and you leave it there because you're around bodily fluids and things of that nature. So they don't want you to take that home and, and possibly um, get some type of infection. Um, they will scream at you. Be prepared for that. One day, I, because when you work up in the OR, you have to wear um, like a bonnet um, and booties and stuff, you know, and I forgot <laughs> mine. And we walked through the OR door and this lady screamed at me like I had committed a crime. And I'm like, what's the problem? And I didn't have the bonnet on. So it happens. If you're human, you're going to forget that. You're going to forget your mask. You're going to forget that, your, your bonnet. So just be prepared to be screamed at. Just don't take it personal. Um, there are other areas that you'll work at, um, such as the ER. And um, I work um, in an area that we had a lot of like stabbings and shootings. You will be in the thick of things. So if, a, if let's say for uh, people that may not work where, you know, you have a lot of the... Um, 
traumatic situations that I've seen, let's say a rollover a car accident, you will be in there taking that cross table C-spine, you will be taking that pelvis x-ray, you will be taking that chest x-ray, and everything that the physician asks you for. The good thing is that they have the portable machine and they are digital, so when you take the image, it'll pop right up. They have pretty much done away with the old dreaded dark rooms and the film and all that. That's, that's pretty much non-existent. So when you do... Um, you know the ER uh, pro or excuse me ER exams. You typically have that portable, and you'll pretty much love it. If you don't have um, the direct digital like my site has, you will take it like a, a image receptor and you put it inside a reader, and then the image pops up on a screen. So again, you don't have to worry about. Um, and they're very the screens are very forgiving. So if you underexpose it or if you overexpose it, you can manipulate the actual image so that it's to um, it's optimal. Um, so you do portables and typically they're called morning portables. It's that little machine that you walk around with. I put a picture of it there. You just hold it. It's not heavy. You, you just hit this button and it kind of propels itself. And then you'll take pictures for patients that are not ambulatory. So ICU patients, CCU patients and things like that. Typically those are limited to just chest x-rays. But in emergent situations, you can do a wrist. You can do a hand. You can do a pelvis with those um, portables, portable machines. The good thing is that... Most facilities, you don't work alone in the ER. You don't work alone when you're doing portables. It's almost nearly impossible for it. Let's say if you're taking an x-ray on a patient that's on a vent, how can I, you know, uh, raise them forward and put the cassette behind them? That's just not impossible. It's not going to work. It's not possible. So typically, you have somebody there with you, which is always nice to have, like, that partnership and that coworker to kind of uh, bounce ideas off each other and rely on each other. Um... So the pros and cons to current um, x-ray is nearly every facility is completely or partially digital. Uh, so again, dark rooms and those old processors and all that stuff is non-existent. Yay! <laughs> and I know that uh, certain um, facilities, if they refuse to go digital, they are going to likely get like a yearly fine. So they're trying to really encourage all uh, facilities to kind of get updated. Digital really does. I mean, it seems like a lot up front for some. I think this is more geared towards the managers. It seems like a lot up front. But on the back end, it makes sense. I mean, you're not having to buy film. You're not having to buy the solution for the dark rooms. You're not having to repeat those films and things of that nature. So it saves on a lot of time and it also saves on a lot of money. So this old setup, not so much anymore. So remembering techniques is a good thing. Um, but when you're working with ER patients and they're lined up outside of your door, you might forget a thing or two. You might forget, oh gosh, what technique would I use for a pelvis or what technique would I use for um, a skull, you know, or something like that. A lot of these are pre-programmed where you can hit skull and you can hit the size of the patient and it would give an exposure that is specific to that patient size. So it's really nice to have that, but still know your techniques just in case that falters or you look at the image and you say something is right, you'll know how to adjust those factors so that it is an optimal um, image. So you will you can play around with those S values or some value, it may not be specifically the letter S, but in my site it's the S value so that the final image can be, like I said, uh, changed before you submit it for the radiologist to read. Um, the good thing is uh, another pro to a radiology is you can transfer to certain um, departments or modalities such as computed tomography, you can transfer to MRI, you can transfer to angiography or DSA, you can do mammography, and you can also go to the cath lab. So it's a lot of versatility um, when you get your radiology degree. And with each modality that I name, you make more money all the way. I think the cath lab is usually the highest, and I will also have a video on my cath lab experience as well. Um, so some people go on to becoming like a technician. As I said, we are not technicians, we are technologists, but you can transfer to become a technician where you can work on some of the um, uh, equipment and things of that nature because you'll learn certain things. And so uh, some people um, become sales reps, which is a lot of um, money, um, but you do travel a lot and things of that nature. And so I would definitely, again, encourage you just to be strong you made it this far for a reason and don't give up, okay? And I will provide my um, direct email address or if you would like, uh, just leave a comment here. I'll make sure I get back with you. So if you have any questions or if you need a word of encouragement, 
feel free to reach out because we are RTs, we are in this together, and I'm here to help you. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe, and also hit the bell so that when I come up new videos of this career series, you'll be the first to know about it. Thank you, and have a good day. Bye.